Hi, and welcome to another out of the box to the left side tutorial here at Websites for Beginners with JP. This one is a little different, actually very different to what we usually do because it focuses exclusively on recipes. And that would be if you have a food blogging site and a site where you share recipes with others. A few things we'll quickly cover before we look at recipe card blocks. And if you're more interested in that, you can check out the link in the description below. Just to note that there is a free version, which we will be using in this video, and then also pro version with pro features. This is a very, very new plugin. It's got a lot of people already using it, but there is still a lot that's going to roll out in the weeks and months and years to come. So I'm very excited to show this to you. And if you ever have to do a recipe site or you know of someone that needs to do one, then you have to keep that in mind, recipe card blocks. Before I show you why you would want to use this, this is a Gutenberg extension. So it's for Gutenberg blocks, which is the WordPress editor. You can use it directly, which means you don't need to add big page builders and other additional plugins if you're just running a very standard, basic blogging foodie website. So what will this plugin for you do? And for that, I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to search for a recipe. Let's say I'm interested in learning how to cook or I want to bake my own bread. So I go look for an easy bread recipe. And then from here, I will get these results. Now, currently I'm running it in Microsoft Bing, which is not the best in the world, but you'll probably be searching it in Google Chrome. What is important that when you start scrolling down through the results, you're going to get this typical markup. What do I mean by markup? Now, normally you're just gonna get a little bit of information there. But when you look at this, number one, you see that there is an image below it. Then you see there's a rating, you see things like total time, how long it will take you to make this bread from the moment you start preparing it until the moment it is fully baked. And then over here, you have things like ingredients. This is what we call schema, schema. I'm never sure how to pronounce it. Big word, schema is specific things that the browser, which in this case is Microsoft Bing, Google Chrome, they look for this and then they say, ah, oh, these are related to a recipe. I'm going to display it in my results in this way. Now for you who is running your own recipe website to get it to work like this, it takes actually a little bit of work and there are many ways you can do it with SEO plugins and schema plugins. But what recipe card blocks plugin is going to do for you is going to provide you with a block where you just enter all this information and it's naturally there. That is pretty cool because it takes all that hard work away from you, which means you can just bring that into Gutenberg, build it out, and then this will appear like so when people search for certain recipes within the browsers. As I mentioned earlier, to get this recipe, you're going to get the free one from the WordPress repository, but there is also a pro version for it. And if you're interested in that and also in WP Zoom, because they've got starter sites for cookery and people who want to put on food out there, they've got them ready. Go and check the link in the description below to learn more about WP Zoom and all of the goodies that they offer for you with their themes and starter sites. Of course, we are looking at recipe card blocks. And just to quickly go through this, just show you what is there. And then also when you see a few of these features like the star rating, premium features that you can get in the pro version, you can check it out. But you are going to see the free version that we will be using has basically got everything you need to get your website up and running and to get your recipes out there in the world nicely marked up so that it can work in any browser. Let's then get into a site, get practical. I've got a recipe site here and I'm using the Suki WordPress theme. It comes with this starter site that you can install. Very nice. And then I have a recipe here. Naturally, this is a starter site. So the recipe hasn't been built out and it's actually got a lot of mumbo jumbo here at the bottom. What you're going to do with the recipe card blocks from WP Zoom is you're going to go into your WordPress Gutenberg editor, and you're going to drop that block in here and then build it out. First, we have to install it. Let's go to the back end, plugins, add new, search for recipe card, and you'll see it recipe card blocks by WP Zoom. Install now and activate. 
this is a Gutenberg blocks extension. You're going to get all your settings over here, which we're not even going to look at at this moment. And if you want to understand more about free and pro, you can have here a look at what you can get between free and pro. I mentioned to you, this is still a very new plugin. So a lot of stuff still rolling out coming soon. But in the meantime, it's going to do a bang on job for you. Now, where are we going to get these blocks? Like normal, you're going to get it in your Gutenberg WordPress editor. As this site of mine has been created on a post backend, which means I didn't create really pages. I've created most of my stuff in posts, and this is where I got my recipe as well from. And that recipe you saw here, the category was baked bowl bread, and the category was recipe. So I click on it, and now I'll bring in that recipe block. A few things I will just do here quickly to clean out the post that we currently have from the Suki WordPress theme. All right before that, let's close this here. Is there's this read more block that had been added here. I'm just going to remove this one. Remember, anytime you work within the Gutenberg editor to interact with any block on the page, simply click on it and you will see the toolbar pop up here and the settings here in the sidebar on the right. Click here and remove block. Now let's find out where the recipe card blocks blocks are. To add a new block, go up here to the plus, click on add block, and then scroll down all the way to the bottom. And you will see over here, seven blocks that you can use to build it out. We will cover them and show you how you can use these. But for today's overview video and introduction to recipe card blocks, the only one that you are really interested in and that you want to work with to get your recipes out there and marked up correctly in browsers is this one, recipe card block schema.org. This is a predefined setting and you can even see here's an example of it as I hover over it, how this is going to display on your site. But I wouldn't cry over it. I think these guys did a terrific job. And there's no reason for you to want to go and put on other blings and all kinds of other weird things there. This is as simple as you want to have it. And why I think this is so good, I often do cooking myself. And when I look for recipes, the worst thing you can get is an over-detailed, heavy-loaded recipe where people talk too much. You just want the instructions. Do this, do this, do this. And this recipe card is going to do that for you in no time. Once you start using this, you wouldn't even want to touch anything else. Right, enough of that. Let's bring it in. Simply click on it. And it's going to drop there where I had placed my cursor last time. And let's update the page at this moment and then go and preview to see how it comes in by default. Scroll down and over here where you see the featured image being repeated again. This is where the card starts. You have an image, then you have a print label over here. You have the title of the post, by whom, the author, then a course, if it's in a course. You have all these settings and labels for servings, preparation time, cooking time and calories. Then an area where you're going to add your ingredients as well as directions. Naturally, those are very important, so we have to build it out. But there are more that you're not seeing here because if the information isn't added, it's not going to appear on the front end. Let's go to the back. And the first thing we'll do is look here in the options on the sidebar. You will see that you have the option between three designs. You have the default design, new design, very nice. And then under that, you have what is called the simple design. Also a very nice one. Let's work with the default one so we all can stay on the same page. Scroll down here from the options because the first one under the default design is going to be this image over here. You've got two options that you can apply here. The first one is to change this out to an image you want to use. If you don't do that and you leave this image or the setting as is, it's going to use the featured image. Then you just have to remember to disable the featured image on your post. Otherwise, you're going to have two exact same images. Let's just replace this one, media library, and I'm just going to grab a random one over here. Okay, just so that we have something different. I'm not sure if this will be connected to bread. Eh, maybe if we're making a yogurt oats bread, this one will work. 
Alternatively, if you don't want an image in here, look again here on the sidebar, you see the option to hide the image. By clicking that, it's going to remove it from your recipe card. The image is there, but it's been removed on the front end, well, back end as well. That is if you don't want it there. I would actually kind of recommend leave it there and rather remove or replace it with a different image if you are using the featured image at the top of your post. Then within this, you're going to get the option of the print button down here. That's an awesome feature that people can simply just click on print and it's going to spit out that recipe for them in their printer. You can also add a Pinterest button if you want to do so over here. And that will pin it, you know, to Pinterest and people can share it to Pinterest. I think still a lot of functionality like Facebook sharing and things like that, that should come. But recipes are very popular collections on Pinterest. So it makes sense why Pinterest is here. Let's leave it there. Next is your header content align area. The header content align area is this area over here with the title and the author. Center align. And then you also have to the right. And this you can decide, let's, let's throw it in the center just to have it a little bit different. You can choose if you want to display the author or not. If it's only your site, maybe you don't want it there. If you have different authors or you want to put your name out there, then leave it on. The great thing is you can also override this author name. And this author name is taken from the user profile in WordPress. If I want to override it, simply type in here, Joe Pine. Of course, that's not my name, but Joe Pine is the guy who's going to be making this yogurt muesli bread for us. Up to here, you've basically set up everything. Now you start with the content, how you build it out. You're going to stick mostly still to what's happening here on the right side. Here you have the option to upload a video and you can upload a video from YouTube. You do remember, we do not see a video on the front end, right? There's no area for a video or no title for a video. If I do add a URL and I'll add one from YouTube here, it is going to load it. And now the video appears over here. This will be the case where you actually have an instructional video that you want to share with them. I'm going to remove it for now just to keep the area nice and clean. Before we go to this area, which is the recipe card SEO settings, and this is important for that schema markup, as I explained to you earlier, where you want these things to appear in the search engine, then you will need to work on this part here. Don't let it scare you. It's something you'll get the hang of. Let's look at those two parts. Any recipe that's very important. That's the ingredients and then the directions. Within the recipe card block, you will see that you have ingredients here and then your directions over here. We can start here, simply click on it and type in, I'm going to type in flour. And you probably have to say something like two cups of flour. And then under that, you can just simply add something new. Let's say two eggs. And I have no idea, but I'm going to make a yogurt bread. So I will say one cup of yogurt and then one cup of muesli. From here, I want to add more ingredients. What, what am I going to do with that? So simply here, add ingredient and you can add that. Very nice. You can also add an ingredient group if you have a few things that you want to group together. I'm going to stick to those four that we have. And if you want to delete them, simply click on delete. Let's update this preview. Scroll down. And there's our card starting, our Pinterest. We've center aligned it and our ingredients appear over there. Look at this nifty feature. As I hover over it as the user, once and I'm in my kitchen and I've already done it, I've already collected it, I can click on it and it will mark it as complete and strike it through. Next will be the directions. Same procedure like last time, Bobby. Break the eggs. And this is a step-by-step -step procedure that you are going to do. Mix with flour. And please don't follow my recipe. You do know I have no idea what I'm doing. Add one cup of milk. And so it goes. If you need to delete, same as the one before, click here on delete, add more. And you can see that you also have the option to add an image to it. Very, very nifty. Let's update that and see what else we can do here. As I scroll down, this is where the video will appear and also an area for notes. If you want to add some more descriptions or more information there. Let's look at the schema and the SEO markup. 
it starts up here and over here. And this is the information that will display in the search engine that will be provided to the user when they go and search for it. You remember we saw the total time it appeared and that's what you want to do over here. The first one is display the course. If it's a course, right, then you're going to do that there and you're going to decide what kind of course this is going to be. You can add those by yourself. So for example, if I go here to cuisine, I can say this is bread because it's all about bread. And then over here, difficulty, I'm going to call this beginner. I can add more than one. So if I go to keywords here for people to search, I can start with bread, yogurt bread, easy, latest, and all of them will appear there as keywords. This will be part of your SEO when people search for it. If you do not want any of these to display, let's say that course one, I'm like, nah, I don't need that. You simply untoggle it up here or next to the name and it will be removed over here as well. If you don't use it, remove it. Scroll down and under this, you will get to the recipe card details. And this is the area we have over here now. Again, you have the option to display or not to display it. You can start with the servings label. The benefit here is that you can change the label name for example, we can say how many serve how many, if you want to do that. And then we say this is going to serve up to eight people. And you can even add the unit over here. The unit in this case, servings. But I think servings, that's a good one. So let's keep it to servings. But this will make you understand what needs to go in there. Do remember, you cannot change this to anything else except servings because it's going to read that there as servings label. You can change the label, but the content should be related to servings. Just like the one below, prep time is the time it takes you to prepare everything before you actually start baking or cooking it. Again, same thing here. If you want to change it, you change it, you put in the time. 45, okay, and it jumped a little bit there. We got it to 45. Display the cook time and then here, display total time. If you have a look quickly again at the one that we had looked at, this one, basic homemade bread recipe, you will see that the total time actually displays there. So not a bad idea if that is what is being presented. It could be that that person, when they marked up their recipe, they didn't use preparation and cook time. But I think uh, total time is a nice idea because that will show people from the beginning to the end what's going to happen. So I could just remove my preparation time and my cooking time and just go to a total time. It calculates the total time based on those two that are there, even though I've removed them. But if you don't want to calculate it, you just put in your own time over there. Let's say 90 minutes. Great. It's nicely marked up. Last one, calories for this markup. And then you have areas for additional details that you can add here as well. This one is resting time. That's when you have knead the dough and you have to leave it for a while before you bake it. I talk like I know what I'm talking about. And then, you know, other baking time, etc. These are up to you how you want to display them and if you want to use them. My principle is usually good enough, less is more. So if you don't need or you don't have specific recipes that really require more labels, then, then don't worry too much about it. Under this, you're going to get a representation of your schema, your SEO markup that's going to help you understand, did you do enough? For example, there's no description added. It kind of tells you, hey, this is a good idea to add a description of your recipe and what you are baking. This is very good for the markup video. You haven't added one. It's not the end of the world, but we all know people love video. We also know that the recipe category has been disabled and that the prep time and the cook time, all of these are marked. And then when people go and search for recipes and yours comes up as a result, it will show this in a fashion like this one here. And that's what the recipe markup is all about. There are a few more blocks here on the left, but in this tutorial, we are not going to cover them. So let's update and then exit. Just go back to the recipe card and to settings. 
Now that you have seen the card, you will also understand a little bit more about the settings in the back. For example, here where it says ingredients, directions, recipe video, you have the power to change that label. If you don't want to say recipe video, you want to call it how to video, then you will do it here and then it will replace it. And when it displays on the front end, it will draw this label. You can save your settings over here. This will also give you a very good idea of a lot of premium features. As I scroll down, you will see user rating, rating stars, colors. So this one over here, you see the rating that we see over there. This you are not going to get in the free version. That's only in the pro version. To me, this is really kind of a no brainer. If you are running a recipe site and you want to do it very simple and you want to be discovered within search engines. Hop on over to WP Zoom, follow the link in the description below, or check it out for yourself by installing the free recipe card blocks from the WordPress repository. That's the end for us for today. From me, JP, hope you have a great day. Stay safe and see you in the next video.